I'm going to make the suggestion that the Judean faith that existed in the first century was absolutely nothing like the Judean faith or the faith of Israel that existed at Mount Sinai. The development of the high priest role began to evolve from that of a servant in Israel to that of a leader in Israel. It's completely outside of the scope of Torah. It was a slick strategy, guys. And so let's compare some of the parallels between the Judean faith and the Greek faith when they finally converged, when Alexander the Great came in. Everybody with me? If we read the Torah and we think the Torah was kept in the first century just like it was at Mount Sinai, then we make the mistake of thinking that every single Judean went and sacrificed sacrifices and went to every single feast day at the temple in the first century at the time of Yeshua, and historically that is incorrect. Most did not. First century Hebrew mindset was birthed out of Greek mindset. Isn't it interesting that Yeshua did not start his biblical ministry in the city where the temple was, and that was the center for religious studies and religious cult, Judea. He started it in Galilee, up near the city of Tiberias, the number one Hellenized city in all the Roman Empire, or at least near Judea, right? Judaism of today was not the Judaism of the first century. The Judaism of the first century, the Judean faith, I don't even want to call it Judaism, Judean faith of the first century was extremely broken, guys. There were so many different sects of Judaism. Only the religious dwelt in Judea. No one in Alexandria or Rome argued about halakha. They were Judeans, and they worshipped God, and they kept Torah the best they could. Most Judeans did that. I mean, I've read these commentaries. I've taught these commentaries before because they're beautiful. They're beautiful in lifting up the weight and the importance of the Torah. But they came from Greek philosophy. The Torah is not only the Logos, Mashiach is, right? But we need to understand that the Judean faith did not exist at Mount Sinai. A lot of people get upset by the idea that the New Testament was written in Greek. After studying history, it's not such a far-fetched idea. It really isn't. Everyone talks about the Judaism in first century. Which one? That's the verse that a lot of Messianic Hebrew fellowships skip over because they don't know what to do with it. Because the Torah states the temple is the center of God's glory. And the Torah states that all worship is supposed to go through the temple. And the Torah states that we're supposed to sacrifice to the temple, and we're supposed to worship at the temple, and the Torah is true, and it is. But in the first century, people weren't keeping Torah with temple worship. The function of the temple had been shifted completely, and we're going to go into the Judeans actually changed the Torah a little bit or changed the rules of how you can atone for your sin without bringing animals to the, to the temple. What if the entire temple had become corrupt and the function of the temple, according to Torah, had been completely lost? How many of you guys know the Ark of the Covenant was not in the second temple? What are we going to do? How are we going to meet with God then? Well, here's the thing, guys. You're not meeting with God now because you've totally rejected every aspect of the Torah that made the temple functional. You're using it as a way just to go and carry on with your lives and send some money, flick a coin back to the temple, and then you're forgiven. It's not the temple that needs worked on, guys. Guys, I can restore the temple right now. He could have. You sure could have restored the temple? Light of, he could have. The ark's dug, dig right here. The ark's here. Restore the ark. God come down, Shik and I would shoot out from the bla- blast out from the temple. But the problem, guys, wasn't with the temple in the first century. The problem was with the hearts of men. They had their calendar. It was very interesting. And they were really, really strict in arguing about their calendar and their halakha and their ritual purity laws and the way that you should keep Sabbath and the way that you should keep the calendar and the way that you should keep the feast days. And this is how you should pronounce the name, maybe. I don't know. And this is how you should do all these things. This was the Essenes. Yeshua never once identified with them. Never once. He never even addressed them. 